Hello, Imajo here with Imajo Explains. Um, feeling a bit nervous given I'm doing a part two of something I recorded la or thought about last like ten or eight months ago. All that aside, oh gosh, more than that. Anyway, um, so some indifference puzzles we're picking up where we left off. Um, let me make myself a little smaller. Yeah. Okay. So we had last messed with the geometric solutions or one geometric solution and an algebraic solution. Um, both arrived at a conclusion of like half of the sum plus or minus half the difference gives you the two values. We had this beautiful picture for saying if you centered the difference on the sum and then went that half the difference in either direction from the halfway point, you would get the lengths for the larger and the smaller number. You'd get two lengths that would add to the sum um, if you put them into, into like that and would have the difference in when you subtract them. Um, and we had this whole example picking 12 and 4 as our sum and difference and getting the links 4 and 8 that we wanted. So algebraically, we wrote down that the sum was 12 and the difference was 4, added and subtracted the equations to eliminate x and y, and solved and got the same two results. Then just replace the sum and difference with S and D to get the general solutions. Same as before. Okay. Where we're continuing now is revisiting that geometric solution because there's another geometric intuition you can use that I just find really helpful. So consider that drawing we had before. But think of most of the lengths as positions or points instead of lengths. So that is, I'll just copy and paste that here and say, instead of these being lengths, we're going to think of them as points. Pew. Uh, sound effects are crucial to all of mathematics. Ask anyone and they'll agree. That is everything but what I wanted. Why can't I click it? Um, fine. Fine. Be that way. Okay, um, so this could be a little smaller, I think. Yeah, and I'll just make a few of them. So one goes at the end of this guy. Excuse you. There. One goes at the end of this one. And then I can get rid of these. Um, it needs to be a little to the right, to be honest. There we are. And then the sum, sum and the difference, uh, we'll think of the answers. We'll think of the um, answers as positions or points instead of lengths. Um, so I don't need that one. All right. Oh, right. Mm. Hmm. 
This is all very important because if I don't get it exactly right, it'll look wrong. Oh gosh, larger number, smaller number. Okay, fine. None of that works. I'll just make different things. Ha <laughs> All right, so larger number, smaller number. Great. This needs to not be in my way. Whoop. Okay. So now we've got this notion where there are these points. Boop, boop. And whenever you think of them as points instead of lengths, what the sum and difference lengths represent ends up morphing in particular when you cut it in half um so now when you think of the sum lengths when you think of half of the sum and difference lengths in the context of these positions it looks like This is fairly analogous to like a circle or where you have a center and a radius. It, yeah, it feels kind of like points on a circle. Um, so what I mean by that is half the sum, which is the average, feels like the center, which is an average. Um, that is, so half the sum feels like half the sum, which is the average, feels like the center of the points, which is an average, um, and the difference and half the difference feels like the radius, um, which is half the diameter. So you can think of the difference as a the diameter, which makes sense, like the distance between two points would be the diameter of the circle containing them, provided the center was on that line halfway between them. So that's sort of a really nice way of thinking about this where two points on the end of this like one dimensional circle um are are what you're trying to find when you were given the information of sort of not exactly the center but if you just half the sum you get the center and the diameter um and so you can take the center and diameter and turn that into the actual endpoints. Um, so you can think of this as being given a one dimensional circle. <laughs> and being asked to find its endpoints. OK, so that's cool. I just think that's a really great intuition for this. Uh, what else? OK, so that completes the geometric solution revisited. Now we're going to hit the graphical solution. Um, so this is like the um, algebraic one, um, but we're going to solve it graphically. So that means we start with the same setup. We're going to write this, but with this and this. Um, and 
And we're also going to want to graph this. All of this is going to end up graphed. Um, plot. That's the word that I wanted. OK. So we had x plus y. Oh, I need to turn them into y equals. How about that? Um, so let's solve those for y to graph them easily. OK, so this one, you just subtract x. This one, um, if you subtract x, you then also have to multiply by negative 1, change the sign of everything. OK. Um, and just to make things more uniform, let's move the x's in front. So it's y equals mx plus b form. So just whoop. All right. So you've got a slope, a negative slope, negative one slope. Yeah, like this. So you've got a negative one slope that starts at s and a positive one slope that starts at d. Um, here's what that looks like when s equals 12 and d equals 4. Was that our values? Yeah, 12 and 4. Great. There we go. I clicked the settings bar. OK. So we have negative x, but starting at 12. And then we've got positive x, but starting at 4. And let's get some more things going on here. Oh gosh, that's really loud. Um, OK, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> if I just don't worry about it too much. Oh, it's so ugly. OK, get it, get it over here. How does that look? Ah. Uh. That's pretty clean. I'm OK with that. OK, so you have this solution is where they intersect. So let's explain what we're looking at here. This is a graph with x along here and y along here. The blue line represents every possible xy pairing choices of x and y that add up to 12. So this expresses the thing I was saying earlier about how um, as you increase one of the numbers, the other one has to shrink so that they still add up to 12. And so you have the idea of doing 12 and 0 up here, where like the y is 12 and the x is 0. And then as you shrink the y, the x is allowed to increase. And that's what's happening as this goes over there. So that's the blue line. The green line represents every possible xy pairing whose difference is 4. And so these shift together upwards because you can have things like an x of 0 and a y of 4. And then you just keep that difference at 4 and shift them up together equally. And that way their difference stays the same as you go up. And where they cross is the xy pair that solves both of them at the same time. That is a point. 
That can be hard to read. Um, it looks like four, comma, six, seven, eight. Right there. Let's make that dark. Oh, not the thing I wanted to make dark. Uh, there. Okay, so there's the crossing at four comma eight. Huzzah. Let's label that four comma eight. Okay. So, uh, and I'll add the captioning that I just described verbally. Um, the blue line represents X, Y pairs that sum to 12, starting with 0, 12 at the top and decreasing down to 12, 0 at the right. The green line represents XY pairs whose difference is four. And this is, this is actually the wrong assumption. Yeah, this is with Y bigger. So it's the wrong assumption way back when. Oh wait, this was x minus y. Oh, this is interesting. Why did this happen? I know why this happened. Um, because I didn't subtract four. Uh, I added four. Um, so there we go. That's the correct one, which then makes it eight has to be the big one. There it is. There it is. Um, whoops. Whoop. Boo. Whoop. Move it up, move it up. All right, that looks pretty. Okay, so the green line represents xy pairs whose difference is four, uh, starting with, zero. let's start with four comma zero, you know, where they're first positive, where you have the smallest y could be in the way we normally think about these things. <laughs> so you start with four comma zero, um on the x axis and increasing with x and y increasing together so their difference stays the same that was basically what i said okay so that's the concept. That's the visual. This needs to be relabeled. Eight comma four. Okay. Um. Are we ready for solvability, or are we out of time? Is the question. Oh, we're technically out of time, I'm fairly certain, but I don't care. Kind of want to finish this. Yeah, I kind of want to finish this. 
Yeah, because it's all going to pull together. It's all going to like... And I really like it when it is. Technical term, the... Okay. So solvability. Solvability. The concept here is we're going to take everything we know at this point and try to figure out um oh we didn't actually get the answer up here like we got the specific answer but we didn't get why it would be at the coordinates um s over 2 s plus d over 2 comma s minus d over 2 we didn't actually arrive at that conclusion but here's how i would like to think of it we know that the y value at least is going to be halfway between here and here and we know there's this point here is 12 and this point here is negative 4 like those are s and negative d and so if you average those you get s minus d over 2 and that's the, the y value there um over here the x intercepts are going to be 4 and 12 so positive d and s and then average them and you get the x-coordinate so let's do that over here um solving for this in general we find the same solutions as before or the same solution so let's get a graph of this down here but we're just gonna like Um, notice that the x and y values of the answer are the averages of the x and y intercepts. then we find then we get the same solution as before okay let's check that out so we need s s um minus d And positive D. Okay. Oh, that looks weird. And I'm going to do brackety things on this other side, so I'm going to flip this around real fast. Yeah, it's bracket time. Uh, not what I wanted. Bracket, bracket, brace. It's the same thing. So from here to here. We're going to do S plus D over 2. Uh, I think I want the line then yeah it's weird watching my old video and learning that that was when i learned the trick about just moving a single end very weird can I rotate this? This looks like a crossbow. Kind of like it. 
Oh, I guess I'll just eyeball it then. There's nothing wrong here. Nothing to see here. And you go up to there, you go down to there, and then I label it. Uh, the label is S minus D over 2. Where you're really thinking S plus negative D, but whatever. Okay, so that's the same solution. Okay, now we can talk about solvability. <laughs> so we're going to take everything we've learned so far and try to figure out um, what S and D even have solutions. Um, so I think the graph one's probably the easiest to think about in that Oh, we didn't we didn't do a thing. This x greater than or equal to y. Um what does that look like? Well, let's pull this. Add an inequality. Um x greater than y means y less than x. Purple is not a becoming color. Oh, gray. What, like here? Gray. Yeah, so the solution has to be in that section. And I'll just add it in here. And inequality, y less than x, gray, and gray, but very light. I'll make this lighter as well. This. Oh, I made that too light somehow. There we go. Okay. So... The blue line, the gray area represents where x is greater than y, oh, greater than or equal to y, which are the, which is where we have to find our solution. For the um, x minus y equals d difference equation to be valid. Like, if you got x minus y equals d, but x is the smaller number, then you didn't actually do the thing we were trying to do. Like, let's say we wanted a difference of 4, and you used an x of 4 and a y of 8. Um, I mean, basically, that's just what's happening when D is negative. But, mm, well, I mean, here, let's think about that. So the green line is as low as D is large. And so when D equals zero, the green line hits the gray line. And when D goes negative, the green line is above. And so you'll only get solutions up here when D is negative, which doesn't really make sense. That's not how we English. So the gray area is sort of redundant. It's sort of telling you something you already know. Um, OK. Okay, so we did that, we did that. Okay, so let's think about solvability.
it seems at first that any S and D should work. S and D should give us a solution. Um, the first thing to keep in mind, um, so is what I've been talking about when D is negative. The first. be negative, at least for English reasons. Whenever we actually let D be negative, the graph will still produce a solution if we allow solutions up here. And in the algebra case, if D was negative, we would just be swapping the plus for the minus here. And that's the same up here as well. Um, this one. It would be just swapping plus for minus there. So that's really for English, not for math reasons. Just for English reasons of making difference make sense. Um, the formulas work just fine. Negative D. It just swaps the two answers. Uh, so then y would be, or, or x would be less than, less than y, and um, and x equals x equals s minus d over 2 to be the smaller one. OK. I want that smaller. So I'm going to do a small fraction. Good, 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 good. OK, so that's just what happens instead. Um, I can't help myself. I have to write it all out. OK, so um, so that's great. Is there anything else? I mean, changing S just changes how tall the blue line is. Changing D changes how tall or how high the green line is. They're always going to cross, like, because one has the minus x and the other has the x, they're just always going to cross, it feels. Um, graphically, it feels like the lines should always cross since one is increasing and the other is decreasing. And the s, d choices just change how high they are. OK, so that explains that. It looks like there's no issue graphically. How about algebraically? Um, I can put any numbers I want to start here, and this will end up being the answer. Um, and if I put in different values for s and d, no matter what, I can still add and subtract them and divide by 2. There's nothing that breaks any of those. So algebraically, the formula seems to work forever. Um, so algebraically, it looks like there's always a solution. And then graphically, it feels like lines should always cross. And then geometrically is always the worst case. Like, this one here, it's like, hmm. Well, OK, up here, it was hard to see. Like, when the links go negative, what are you actually doing? <laughs> um, but that might make you wonder about a negative sum. But as we saw in the other cases, a negative sum is actually fine, surprisingly. Um, yeah, so I don't recommend looking at this too much. But if you look at this one and think about that, 
then half the sum is always a number that exists. That will always be the center. And that center can be wherever, even in a negative position. And then the radius will always be half the difference. And if it's negative, that just swaps the two points. So we get everything that we got before in this version. So I'll mention that here. Um, geometrically, it's hard to see what happens for negative s until you look at the um, revisited version, thinking of s over 2 as the center of a one-dimensional circle, which can be in a negative position. Um, and thinking of d over 2 as the radius of a one-dimensional circle of the circle, um, which, when negative, just swaps the points, endpoints. So there you have it. That encapsulates, in the end, this one encapsulates both of these realizations. So that's cool. Where? Yeah, yeah. So those are three different ways of looking at why there should always be a solution. However, there is one thing to say. So we always have a solution. Um, the one thing to say is we picked x and y, like we named them sort of arbitrarily. So there are cases you could, if you, if you think of these cases before as having two solutions, like if you say, let's go back to the top. If you ask two numbers sum to 12 and have a difference of four, what are the numbers? Well, the answer was four and eight. But is four and eight and eight and four two different answers? They're the same two numbers, but in a different order. And that's not always something you get to count as the same thing. Here, I think with this wording, I would call that the same answer and say, in all cases, there is one solution. However, if we do care about the order of the numbers, then there are two solutions except when the two values are the same. And the two values are the same exactly when their difference is zero. Exactly when that radius, half the difference, is zero. So let's mention that just in case it matters to somebody someday. Um, however, note that if order of the numbers matters, if order matters, yes. Um, order matters. Then, all these normal cases have two solutions. Um, sum to 12 and um, difference of 8, 4. Yeah, 4 as solution, the two solutions. Um, for eight and eight four. Okay, so normal cases have two solutions. The only way to have anything else of a different solvability is if both numbers are the same, in which case there is only one solution. 
and it'll be s over 2 oh s over 2 because we already know um, the difference is zero, in which case there's only one solution. Uh, the difference, this is exactly when the difference is zero. So the radius is zero. Um, and in this case, the solution is this and it you can tell like this is the s over 2 plus or minus d over 2 but d over 2 is 0 so it's just s over 2 s over 2 for both x and y and you can tell since they're the same value swapping them doesn't make any difference this is really cool to me because this relates to the earlier concept of trying to think about when d was negative because making d negative swapped the two points and swapping the two points is exactly what we were trying to investigate whenever we ordered mattered so thinking about these two very different concepts actually intermixed and became solving the same problem or solving two different problems with the same fact. And that's a thing that happens in math surprisingly often. Uh, all right, that went way over and was twice as long as intended. But hey, two, two for one this episode. It's parts two and three. I'll label it like that in the description, I'm sure. Ugh. Okay, so having said all that, um, obligatory request for likes and subscribes, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm fairly certain now I'm going to actually make a habit of putting these out now that I have moved to a new location and have full control over my space and my life. So that's my plan. See you tomorrow.